As an operator, you may be responsible for the proper operation of reboilers. Like other components in a process, reboilers should be checked periodically to ensure that they're operating properly. One important check that should be made is the level in the reboiler. This check is made by observing the level in the reboiler sight glass. The tubes in a reboiler must be covered with the process liquid. If the level in the reboiler drops too low, the tubes could overheat and be damaged. On the other hand, a level that is too high can be a problem too. For example, if the level in a kettle-type reboiler gets too high, the vapor and liquid will not separate properly, and a mixture may flow back into the distillation column. On a thermosiphon-type reboiler, it's important to check the circulation of process fluid through the reboiler. On thermosiphon reboilers, the circulation is created by the difference between the density of the liquid entering the reboiler and the density of the mixture of vapor and liquid leaving the reboiler. This circulation can be disrupted if the liquid level in the distillation column is too high. If the level in the column rises too high, it can block the reboiler outlet line and disrupt the flow. With both kettle type and thermosiphon reboilers, instrument readings should be checked frequently. In many cases, the temperature in the reboiler is dictated by the temperature needed in the distillation column. For example, a controller that monitors temperature in this column sends a signal to a steam control valve to either decrease or increase the amount of steam flow to the reboiler. On many kettle type reboilers, the process liquid is pumped from the column to the reboiler by a pump. The pump should be checked to ensure that it is operating properly. In this topic, we looked at two types of reboilers, kettle type reboilers and thermosiphon reboilers. We examined the major components of these reboilers and we saw how they operate. We also took a look at some of the checks that can be made on reboilers to ensure that they're operating properly. Now let's try some practice questions on reboilers. The process liquid from the distillation column enters the reboiler here. The liquid flows around the baffles and tubes and receives heat from the steam. The overflow weir acts as a dam to ensure that the tubes in the reboiler always stay covered with the process liquid. As the process liquid is heated, some of the liquid boils off as a vapor. The vapor separates from the liquid and collects in the dome-shaped space above the tubes in the shell and then flows back to the distillation column. The process liquid that does not boil off is pumped from the reboiler and sent to where it can undergo additional processing or be stored. The process liquid from the distillation column enters the reboiler shell and passes around the tubes. Heat from the hot oil vaporizes part of the process liquid. The mixture of liquid and vapor is then returned to the distillation column. The flow of the process liquid and vapor is caused by the difference between the density of the liquid entering the reboiler and the density of the heated mixture that's returning to the distillation column. The heated mixture in the reboiler is less dense than the liquid coming in from the column. This difference in density causes the heated mixture to rise out of the reboiler and return to the column. The result is a natural circulation between the reboiler and the distillation column. One important check that should be made is the level in the reboiler. This check is made by observing the level in the reboiler sight glass. The tubes in a reboiler must be covered with the process liquid. If the level in the reboiler drops too low, the tubes could overheat and be damaged. On the other hand, a level that is too high can be a problem too. For example, if the level in a kettle-type reboiler gets too high, the vapor and liquid will not separate properly, and a mixture may flow back into the distillation column.